Hey, good morning. Episode three. Uh, we're going to be doing part two of the weapon systems today. We're going to be talking about bow or archery hunting, specifically compound bow, um, not recurve, not recurve. Sorry. Um, with that, so the three questions, right? Remember episode uh, one and two is what are you going to hunt? Where are you going to hunt it? And when are you going to hunt it? So with archery hunting, um, it is not a mystery that you are going to have more opportunities throughout the year to hunt with archery. Uh, the limitations placed on archery is not as much as, say, rifle hunting, okay? And it has to do with the danger. It also has to do with the pretty much the skill of the hunter, right? So it's a lot harder to archery hunt um, than it is a rifle hunt. Sorry, rifle hunters. Um, I do both, and I'll tell you, it's way fucking harder to archery hunt than it is to rifle hunt. Now, finding the animals rifle hunting sometimes in late season is harder but actual the the getting in and uh getting into an effective range to kill the animal is much much tougher so uh let's get into it so basic safety all right um with bow safety is don't knock an arrow until you're ready to shoot it okay don't point the bow at anything of course, as soon as I drive by, like this big ass fucking truck. Hey, real quick, uh, so I'm gonna insert this into the safety piece. I kind of forgot to mention it. Is dry firing your bow? Do not do it. Meaning, don't hook up your release. Don't draw it back and release it unless you have an arrow knocked, and the other requirements have to be met. Right? Do not do that. Dry fire your rifle. That's fine. You're not going to hurt anything with your rifle. And I recommend practicing that way. Your trigger pull and how the rifle is going to interact when you pull that trigger. Okay. But do not do that with your, you're going to blow it up and you're going to have to have it rebuilt. It's going to cost you four or $500 to do that. And then it's never going to shoot right again. Do not dry fire your bow. Point an arrow or point the bow with an arrow knocked at anything you don't intend to destroy. Okay. Know what's at your target. Know what's beyond your target. Okay. Um, don't shoot a skylined animal or a target over a ridge. You don't know what's over there. Pretty much common sense, right? Always uh, clean your bow. Uh, ensure for or check for damage when you take it out and when you put it away. Um, I would prefer to store it in a hard case over a soft case. A lot less damage. Um, I will say in my garage here on a daily basis, I have hooks that I actually hang up high. And then I can grab it in the morning and throw 20, 30 rounds uh, downrange every single morning. Okay. Um, so that's really it. And always check your arrows for damage too. So uh, every morning when I go, I give a little stress test of my arrows. And I'll show you here in a second uh, what I do and make sure I don't hear anything funny. Uh, be careful of broadheads. Broadheads are extremely sharp. They're meant to kill. So when you're handling them, they're sharp. They're not going to kill you unless you like stab yourself or some shit right but you can fuck up your digits here so uh anyway let's get into it so bows basic bows compound bows okay so what i'm shooting here is the new hoyt vtm 34 34 is in reference to axle to axle um i like a longer bow because i shoot out west and there is potential for longer range shots and there's more stability with the longer bow if you look at some target bows or competition target bows they're going to be like 38 40 they're going to be long as shit why? Because they're more stable, okay? Uh, especially from anywhere from side to side. It can be much more stable in the hand. It's going to float in my hand. It's going to level itself out pretty nice. Um, I do run two stabilizers. I haven't tried the back stabilizer yet. I've only got about maybe two, 300 uh, uh, arrows that I've slung out of this thing. Um, I still have another couple hundred before season starts September 2nd, which is in one month, right? Um, String, peep, D loop. This is where you're actually knocking your arrow from. Also, you have the rest, which also has a retention system, depending on what kind of rest you have. I think pretty much all of them do now. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. Because if, if I think I'm going to shoot very soon or I need to reposition and I have an arrow knocked, um, I can leave it in there and I, I don't have to worry about it coming out. And then uh, your sight, okay? I'm running a black gold um, five pin slider meaning my top pin, I set at 20, my bottom one is at 60. I measure it out and allows me to put the tape out to 100. And then my pins in between are 20, 30, 40. I'm sorry, 30, 40, and 50. 
uh, set. So for holdovers, if I don't have time to slide, I will say my 40 and my 50 are fucked up. Um, but I did just shoot a uh, match at Bear Valley, a 3D match, a long range one. And my slider works perfect. Uh, it is, that is dialed. My 20 and 60 are perfect. And then I can slide as necessary up or down uh, to get the right range. And they shot, they shot the fucking eyeballs out of everything I shot. And it was pretty nice. Um, I happen to be running an extra, a little sling a here. Um, I don't really use it for shoulder thing. If anything, I'll use it, drape it around my neck and I can use it as an extra armrest for, but not for uh, glassing. Uh, if I'm standing or whatnot, I might even just take it off. Uh, I didn't really use it last season at all. Okay. So setting this thing up pro shop, get to there. They will be willing to teach you everything. Um, like I said, big box versus small store, big box store, Cabela's shields, not a fan. They have things there. They have very, very helpful people there. But, um, if you go in there on a Monday and then you go in there on a Wednesday, you might not have the same employee. Okay. Um, and that is, I think kind of important having the same person help you out because they get to know you, you get to know them and they understand maybe how you shoot or how, how you work. Right. Um, I prefer the small mom and pop shops because, well, if you go in there and they got a lot of dead animals, like I said before, that they killed, that means they know how to hunt and they know how to set things up. I use, uh, out here, I use the spot archery, uh, Steve and his team are fucking amazing. You go in there and you say, Hey, I've never bow hunted, set me up. They will spend hours with you sitting on all the bows. They'll do all the measurements. They'll find out what you like, what you don't like, what kind of draw, what kind of weight you need to draw. And they're going to set you up right. Right. So my particular one, I'm a 29 and a half inch draw and I'm pulling 73 pounds, right. With a 29 inch arrow, uh, carbon fiber. And, uh, this particular arrow is a 350 spline with a 50 grain insert and a hundred grain tip. Okay. And like I said before, I always, Okay, no noises. Um, that 100 grain tip, when you go to a broadhead, should be the same exact size broadhead. So if I'm running 100 grain, I just take this out and I put in the broadhead. Make sure it's torqued down, good to go, and then just watch your fingers on it, okay? Um, spend time, sets and reps, they're gonna get you set up right. They're gonna set you up with the right release that maybe you need in particular. Okay. Uh, speaking of releases, what I run, my normal release, I really, I uh, run a spot hog index finger. You have thumb releases and you have hinge releases also. Okay. I like this one because it has a nice little boa system. I can tilt it down. It's a solid piece here that you can adjust for length and then it flips down and it stays out of the way. Okay. Uh, there's ones that are maybe on some webbing that kind of dangle a little bit and you just got to do a little flip into your hand. I just rub that across my body. So when I'm ready to draw, I can draw, pull the trigger and release. My backup release is a uh, Carter Wise Choice. All right, this is a three finger thumb release. Okay, and I got it set to about 11 ounces. I do know that if I have to use this because I had a malfunction on this, I am at 20 yards, I am six inches to the right. So it's about 12 clicks for me. So I got to move it and it moves it right over. Um, if it's in a pinch and it's a really short range shot, I know I need to hold over about that far. Okay. But I know there is a difference between my anchor points on this. And when I talk about anchor point, when I draw, okay. And I pull it back, this is sitting here arrow. Sometimes you can have a little kisser button. So you're always hitting the right spot when you pull that back. Right. And I go to release and I pull is a little bit different than if I have my thumb release and I pull it back here, my hand is different. Okay. And that causes the difference in, uh, the right and the left. Okay. My elevation is pretty damn good. I shoot a lot and I always, I kind of, I dial it in and I fudge with it a lot. You see that? I didn't cuss. I said fudge with it. I didn't say fuck with it. I said fudge with it. So anyway, uh, what else do I run? Oh, so broadheads talked about broadheads a little bit. Uh, in there, you need to find the right one. So these are annihilators. Um, these are what I use right here. I'm a big fan of these. I try to promote these guys as much as possible. Okay, there are three blades, solid broadhead, fixed broadhead, razor fucking sharp. This is a hundred grain. Uh, these are the regulars, not the XLs. They make an XL one and they make a 125. Um, uh, I did have my kills last year with these guys. Uh, fucking amazing broadhead. And I got a 
fucking fly in my face. See, now I'm not saying fucking all the time instead of fudging. Anyway, click that up, put that in there, put that in the back. All right. If you're going to get into bow hunting, you need to immerse yourself in it. You need to be a student of it. You need to learn a lot. It's not something you can just pick up one day and then the very next day go out and try to hunt. You can do it. I don't think you're going to be successful because there's a lot of things and a lot of different things you need to learn about it. Okay, rifle hunting is a little bit more forgiving. The rifles are a little bit more forgiving. Your mechanics and your fundamentals behind a rifle, um, I don't want to say are easier, but it is more forgiving. And an arrow is not. Archery is not, right? I frequently practice at long ranges, not to kill at long ranges. I don't have no desire to do that. But any kind of little error, any, any imperfection you have is going to be amplified at long ranges. I can dial that in, and so anything like 40, 30, 20 yards, I know I'm going to be shooting exactly where I want to put that arrow every single time because my fundamentals have been honed, and I've done it so many times. It's second nature, okay? Um, when I, told, I think I said I shoot uh, like 20 to 30 arrows every single morning, all right? In those 20 to 30 arrows, the way I do it, I usually do five standing, and then I drop to a knee, and I do five more. And then I switch knees. I shoot from the other knee. I do five more and then maybe I'll do a knee and I stand, shoot, knee, stand, shoot, switch knees, stand, shoot, sitting, draw, stand, shoot. Okay. I try to get all those different positions because when you're actually out there, um, you don't know what position you're going to be in and it's not ideal. You're not on a firing line. You might be behind a tree, shrub. You got to know what's exactly in front of you. Uh, my elk last year, um, he jumped out five, he was five yards from me. But I had a branch in my way, and I was drawing at the same time he was popping out. I wasn't even looking through the peep. He ran, bolted. I gave him a quick cow call, and he stopped on a dime. I knew the range because I practiced the ranges in my head, which we're going to talk about. I let the arrow fly, and it was, it was perfect. Um, I estimated 52 yards. He was at 53 yards. I'm okay with that, right? Um, when I go to ranges and I start doing that, or if I'm hiking, I usually have a range finder, and I'll look, and I'll see – there's my truck. It's 15 yards. And then I pull it up 16 yards. I'm like, all right, well, what happened with that? Maybe my depth perception was off What's the lighting look like when I'm hiking out in the woods, I'll do the same thing uh, with my girlfriend or with my buddy. Uh, if we're scouting or anything, I go, how far is that tree? And we'll guess, we'll range it. We'll see how close we are. And they keep doing that and do that continuously. So you always know what the ranges are, especially in the place you hunt. Try to do that often because there's lighting and different ways. Your depth perception is going to uh, perceive a lot of different things. All right. More things you can learn and you want to immerse yourself in. Right. So I love books and I love reading. Uh, this one right here is hunting with the bow and arrow by Saxon Pope. All right. This book, um, when was it written? There we go. First published in 1923. All right. And, uh, there are some historical figures in here that Saxon Pope, uh, which when I say he wrote the book on archery, he literally wrote the book on archery. Like literally wrote the book on archery. It gives you a complete history of what archery hunting is, how it happened, uh, where it came from. And then he talks about how he built his own and then approaches to hunting and how he actually hunts. Uh, it's great. And they talk about how uh, the Native Americans treated archery and how they approached everything with that. Okay. Great book. Again, Hunting with a Bow and Arrow by Saxon Pope. And in here, it actually references another book called... The Steel Hunter by Theodore uh, S. Van Dyke, okay? This was originally published in 1883. That's an old-ass book. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put the links below, All right? And this is actually a scanned-in copy of the original book in this book. Um, it's great. Still Hunting from 1883, and the lessons in here and the way you approach it and the way you should hunt – You want to be a student of something? Get into these two. That is a uh, it's a great it's a wealth of knowledge inside of that. All right, um, that's all I really got. Again, if you're going to get into bow hunting, become a student of it, immerse yourself in it, learn, get to the pro shop, learn from the pros. That's why they're called pro shops. These guys do this for a living. All right, there's plenty of resources online, plenty of YouTube videos. You can learn shit and do shit and do shit. But the best way to do it is shoot. Get the sets and reps in, know how you shoot, get to your pro shop, learn from the best. I am not the best. 
I'm going to point you in that right direction. All right. If you have any questions, hit me up, DM me, message me, make a comment below, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you for episode four.